Ladies and gentlemen, today is the day. It's a very important day when it comes down to the markets, the economy, real estate, the stock market. It's very important, right? We have the end of the two-day Fed meeting, which started yesterday, Tuesday, today being Wednesday, being the day it ended, right? And we're going to have a lot of information around tapering, interest rates, the economy. We're going to have Jerome Powell give a press conference. He's going to answer a bunch of questions, and as always, he's going to evade a bunch of questions and in the meantime while we wait for this I wanted to make a video going over three oversold stocks that I'm looking at now so that's what we're doing today guys we're going to talk about that break them down so sit back relax hit the like button subscribe check out my patreon get your five stocks from Weeble and your 50 bucks from m1 finance all of that's linked down below and with that being said let's get into it so the markets as of now are teeter-tottering right we have spy trading between 460 and 465 it has to pick a direction whether it's under 460 or over 465 that's kind of what I'm waiting for here in the very short term we have triple Q let me pop that up triple Q is trading between 380 which roughly was the low from yesterday and about 390 which was the high from believe it or not pre-market today we actually hit 390 now we're trading at about 385 and on top of that we have the VIX the volatility index up around 5 percent so there's a lot of uncertainty right now there's a lot of fear I'm not going to say it's the most fear we've seen in the markets because the VIX although it is elevated it's not as bad as it was recently when it hit 35 I mean the VIX is only at a 23 now which anything above 20 is heightened volatility I would say uh, but again it's not as bad so there is a little bit of uncertainty right now and the markets are just waiting patiently right for the next couple of hours for this press conference to occur for us to see what the heck's going on from the Fed's perspective and uh, yeah I'm pretty excited for it I'm going to talk about it more in my video later on today so make sure you guys subscribe hit the like button while you're at it if you haven't done so already and drop me a comment let me know your thoughts on the markets the Fed what you're doing I'd love to know as always and with that being said let's talk about some stocks number one is Mara. So you guys know at this point in time, Bitcoin is getting destroyed as a lot of the uh, stocks out there, cryptos, um, you know, I'm sure real estate's taking a hit, even though we don't see the daily price of real estate like we do with the stock market or people don't pay attention to it, real estate as much as they do to the stock market, right? Everything's pretty much selling off. And as of now, crypto is, like I said, taking a hit. Bitcoin is sitting at about 47K when it just recently hit 69K. And during that time period where it went from 69 to now 47K, it's down what is that, like 30%, maybe a little less? I don't know. My mental math might not be the best here. But during that time period, Mara, ticker symbol M-A-R-A, -A, which is a mining, you know, crypto mining company, this went down from $83. Now it's sitting at $35. In other words, it is down 60% in just one month, a little bit over a month, which is fairly remarkable, right? And you guys can clearly see it's oversold here on the four-hour chart. And if I pull up this three-year, let me show you guys the three-year chart. It seems like we're towards the bottom of the channel and we're holding above the 50 moving average on this time frame. And on the yearly chart, you guys can see it just as well. You guys can see clearly we're trading towards the bottom of the channel. We're trading in an uptrending channel, first and foremost, right? And this simply seems like a healthy pullback, a very healthy 60% pullback. That's just the nature of the crypto market, guys, and stocks that revolve around crypto. They're volatile, they go up a lot, and they come down just as fast and maybe sometimes more than they go up. But in this case, you know, the trend looks pretty good. That's what you notice with these stocks, right? They do very well. But when the correction hits, the bear market, the pullback hits, they pull back aggressively. And when they do pull back, that is when I'm looking at them, you know, pretty hardcore. Because if Bitcoin turns green heading into the new year, you know, let's say we do get a Santa Claus rally 
the next couple of weeks here. Potentially, you know, that could happen. And then we turn over 2022, January, February. You know, if Bitcoin starts going back to 50, 60, dare I say 70, you know, if it starts ripping back a couple, you know, tens of thousands of dollars higher from where we are now, you bet your, you know what, Marathon Digital Ticker symbol M-A-R-A is going to rip as well. I mean, look at what happened last time this thing caught fire. End of September, it was pretty much right where we are now, 30, 35. And then it went all the way to $83 in the span of a month, a little bit over a month. It doubled, almost tripled, right, guys? So, yeah, all I need to say is it's oversold. Watch it. If Bitcoin gets hot, Mara is going to rip. And a lot of these other crypto oriented stocks are likely to rip as well. You know, Riot is another one. Um, there goes Siri on my freaking watch talking again, guys. She's annoying. She gets on my nerves sometimes. You know, she randomly says, sorry, I don't understand what you're saying uh, because I'm not talking to you, Siri. That's why you don't understand what I'm saying. But <laughs> but anyway, Mara riot of course we're looking at voyager digital of course we're looking at coinbase as well these are the stocks that probably will recover some more than others when crypto ultimately does recover if it does recover so keep your eyes on the blockchain or rather the bitcoin the crypto stocks you know blockchain oriented stocks if you want to call them that as well you know that's what i'm looking at here first and foremost 10 cent and if you guys don't like chinese stocks i guess skip this part Watch it if you want to. I don't know. But Tencent looks like it's been consolidating over the past couple of months. You guys can see ever since the middle towards the end of August, we found a bottom, at least a temporary bottom here, at about $53, $55 per share. You guys can see we've tested that countless of times, even back in July, end of July, you know, we held 55 bucks. You know, we've held it since July once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now it's the 15th roughly test that we have above $55 per share. And what we're noticing is we're trading in a wedge, first and foremost, on this four hour chart over the past couple of months as we've kind of been consolidating above 55, like I said. So for me to, you know, even consider going long 10 cent as a swing trade, I need to see it take out. Um, the moving averages, right? Because we're under the moving averages now. And honestly, I need to see it break 60 and start gaining momentum above $65. So the fact that it's holding 55 is a good first step, but we're just not getting, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, not getting the breakout quite yet. Hope you guys enjoyed that little voice crack. Uh, you know, so if we take 60, 65 out after the consolidation above 55, I think. 10 cent could be a trade, a, a nice play. So I'm putting my alert at 60 and just peel the layers back a bit. Look at the three year chart, guys. We're consolidating right above the 180 SMA, which has been support over the past couple of years on this three year time frame. You know, if we break 60, 65, that's going to be a continuation of the uptrend over the past couple of years. And from there, we're probably going to start ripping. So keep your eyes on 10 cent. And just because a lot of you have a negative, um, negative, what's the word here? You have negative thinking around the Chinese stocks. It doesn't mean that they can't go crazy. You know, just because you think that Chinese stocks are trash, they're in the gutter, you know, doesn't mean that they're not going to go up. You know, that's what you're going to realize in the markets at some point, right? Um, the markets do what they want to do. They don't care about what you think and your feelings. So just because you're in a rut, uh, not even a rut, what's the word here? You have a negative stereotype around the Chinese stocks in the short term here. It doesn't mean they can't go start going back, uh, you know, near those highs, you know, that they were. So keep your eyes on the uh, Chinese stocks, Tencent in particular. I'm watching it. BMY, Bristol, Myers, Squib is another one that I'm looking at. This is a healthcare company. It's starting to break out recently. It started to break out. Um, it went from 70 to 53, hit that 53 low about two weeks ago. Now we're starting to break back above 60 on the four hour chart here. We're above the moving averages, and we just recently took out the highs from a month ago at about 59.60 bucks. Now we're pushing towards 61. The stock's currently up 2% on the day. So Bristol Myers Squib is breaking out on the 
180-day chart here, no doubt about it. And on the three-year chart, you guys can see a clear uptrending channel that it's been trading within for two years. Yeah, two years, guys. So, look, we held the bottom of the channel, 53, 55, broke above 60 now. I think this could make a move towards mid-high 60s at least. Maybe we break 70, um, at, at, you know, as it's still pretty oversold here on the three-year chart. So, overall, guys, those are three stocks that I'm looking at. Mara, which is probably the more risky one, which has pretty high reward. Ten cents, pretty risky as well, honestly, with the Chinese exposure. Um, you know, granted, they are Chinese stocks, so they have a lot of Chinese exposure. But again, without risk, you're not going to have much reward. So I think those two, Mara and Tencent, are the riskier ones, but they have a lot of reward if they pan out, of course. And Bristol Myers Squibb is a little bit safer, uh, but it has less reward. You know, that's what you typically notice. The more risk you take on, the more money you can make, less risk, less risk, less money. Uh, but you could preserve your capital more if you take less risk. Because let's say you invest your money in BMY, J and J, Procter and Gamble, Coca Cola, Pepsi. Sure, you're not gonna make a lot of money over the long term. Sure, you might make a, a good amount. Yes, of course you will. Uh, but you're not gonna blow up your account either. But if you invest in a bunch of Bitcoin mining stocks. You can make a killing over the next 10 years, but uh, you could also lose all your money potentially. So we'll wrap it up there. If you guys found value, hit the like button, subscribe, check out my Patreon if you want all my moves in the markets. And you guys could also get five stocks from Webull, which is limited time, by the way, and 50 stocks or 50 bucks rather. I wish it was 50 stocks. That'd be sick. 50 bucks from M1 Finance, link down below. So make sure to check out the Patreon. Get your five stocks from Webull, 50 bucks from M1 Finance. I'll catch you guys in the next video which i made a video this morning well i filmed it yesterday release it this morning um, going over stocks to buy before the next recession keyword is before so check it out i'll pop it here i'll see you guys there thanks for watching as always keep crushing the markets stay safe out there peace out